That's right, my dudes. That's right. It's here. Welcome to Work in Progress, the daily video series where I document my studio practice as a full-time gallery artist while showing you, that's right, you, the viewer, what it takes to get here and stay here along the way. The canvas is here, bros. It's time to get to freaking work. So, a uh, plain and simple kind of plan for today. We are going to be scaling up one of the smaller paintings that I've recently finished. And this is gonna be a little bit uh, kind of different of a process for me today because I've never, while I've done you know studies before that have ended up being large scale paintings, I've never like directly just scaled up a study like projecting the study itself. So it's gonna be a, a little bit different of a process. Um, and we've talked about this in another video, but I think the result is going to be very worth it. We're gonna have like a nice loose, um, hopefully keeping a lot of like the, the nice and like looseness from the study, the kind of bold brushwork, not getting too bogged down on detail, which should hopefully result in, yeah, just a good fresh new approach to what I'm doing. Close the door so nobody bothers us. So I'm going to get changed into my studio clothes and we're going to just get right to it, man, because it's going to be a good long day of painting. We've got a lot of work and now it's crunch time. Let's go. Okay, so a lot of this is going to be familiar to you if you've been watching these videos, nothing new here, just kind of the way that I'm uh, stretching canvas, but a neat little trick that I want to tell you guys about is that, hey, you can just stretch several fucking canvases over one pair of stretchers. Under that painting, I have the abstract that I've been working on and I'm gonna just layer right over it. So technically I've got three paintings on, on that one set of stretchers. And it's honestly just a good way of saving space, man. Like, especially if one's just kind of like a, a slow moving painting, you know, just something that you've got going on in the background. It's a great way to just store and stuff like that. And I think I'll make a little video later on a whole bunch of those kind of little hacks that I've learned from, you know, working large scale in limited space. Now I'm fortunate enough to have a great, you know, studio with plenty of space, but before that wasn't the case. And uh, I had to really like, you know, make do and figure out little innovative ways to, to create space for myself to work large scale. And this was definitely one of them. So what I'm doing next, I'm scaling up a study directly. So what I'm doing uh, is I'm putting the wretched blanket back on the thing and I am just projecting the painting that I did um, of the piece, the, the smaller painting that I did of the piece that I'm working on right now. And here you can see it. And I'm just tracing pretty much just like my brushwork, man. It's not anything like I'm not working from the original reference photo so i'm just tracing my brushwork and i'm just like scaling that up directly and this is technically the first time that i've ever done this which is pretty exciting for me um and you know it, this whole part was pretty simple and easy just kind of outlining the the basic marks that i made and i'm just gonna like translate them and I'm, I'm actually very excited to see how that works because i'm normally just so used to getting bogged down on detail and this is going to be a really great method to keep things loose and fresh the brushwork nice and choppy and big and you know it's just going to be a good one i'm excited about it so I just, uh, you know, turning the lights on and off and getting it ready to go. And after that, I got the original painting and I put it up next to 
the big version that I'm working on in here. I'm just trying to match the color of the background as closely as possible. I'm kind of like not even working from the computer screen very much at all. I'm like pretty much just relying on the painting as reference, which again is very new to me. I'm used to working from the screen. I'm used to like matching color using Photoshop as a tool. And so much of this series has just been different ways like or just has just encouraged different ways for me to get out of my comfort zone, which I really enjoy. But it's always a good idea to have some sort of, you know, routine to fall back on some sort of familiarity. So with this, you know, we're starting like we did all the other ones and we're outlining the figure and just making sure that um, all of our edges or, or the, you know, the outline of the drawing is nice and solid before I start filling everything in. And that's just going to make sure again that everything is tight and solid and, um, you know, everything has its everything in its right place um yeah so not you know not a not a big uh fuss about that but here now i'm filling everything in and one thing i'm trying to keep in mind is the rhythm of the brushwork so the way that i'm starting from closest to the figure and working outward you'll see that the brushwork kind of um it's almost like a ripple effect you know where i'm trying to echo the shapes outward and by creating that rhythm what i hope to achieve is just like a sort of like i don't know what i would call it i mean again it's just rhythm but it 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 creates a sense of movement that guides the eye towards the center of the painting with the brushwork itself so instead of having you know line a uh, brushwork that goes up and down like i did with the other ones for the sake of the photograph this one is kind of just echoing uh the shapes that are close to it and then as I get further out, um, I'm using thinner and thinner layers of paint. And that is also just a little trick that I use to create a little bit of like disuniformity or I don't even know if that's a word, but just so it's not quite as uniform as we work outward. And uh, I, you know, I had a little bit of a technical difficulty with the paint because I had gone to the store and I had bought a tube of Mars Red, which was the color that I used for the background of the other piece. And I wanted to use it straight out of the tube, essentially for the for the sake of efficiency. But be, I, I didn't realize that I had actually used Mars Orange, right? So when I got to the studio and, you know, I started making... Um, pouring the color out i noticed like oh crap dude this is like not the color and then i got the original tube and i saw oh, it's orange instead of red so i got frustrated um and yeah so i i wanted to start with the with the figure today but i really couldn't because um well one thing is when you're working at this scale and you're using like a, a bristle brush a kind of like a hard one what ends up happening is you just get splatters of paint fucking everywhere and so the inside of the figure even though on the video it looks pretty clean there's speckles of red all up in it and so that makes it difficult if you want to work uh in the in if you want to start working on the foreground but you haven't finished the background what will end up happening is you'll end up just getting specks of paint all over everything so what i'm going to do tomorrow is work you know any of the last little touch-ups that i need to on the background i'm going to go get a tube of mars orange probably it actually just depends i might like it the way it is at this stage and if i do i will leave it as such and then just work the foreground but if not um i'm gonna first work on the shadows tomorrow because that's the darkest shape and that's what has to get blended into the background so i'm gonna see how you know how the treatment works and and whether or not the composition makes sense and and whether the finish kind of adds up in the way that i want it to and then i'll start working on the foreground so that'll be tomorrow um but yeah man good day of painting a uh, little bit of technical difficulty but we're all good and that painting is going to be done this weekend so probably not going to take any day i'm not going to take sunday off so we'll have a video sunday and um yeah we're going to just keep crunching man i think probably for the foreseeable future at least while i'm working on the big boys i'm not going to take any days off and it's just going to be plowing through so i'm going to try to get an early an early night's sleep tonight if possible and we'll see you tomorrow man thank you guys for your time and attention i love you and have a good night